like a blizzard out. I mean, it would be if it was colder. So there has been a lot going on. There's since, been a development. Since yesterday. So I was having like a stabbing pain in my side yesterday. And it was just, I don't know, it was just uncomfortable and I was unsure of what it was. So I called my doctor. They got me an appointment because they're like, oh, it could be appendicitis. And in my appointment, they decided to hook me up to a monitor and they saw that I was actually having contractions. And then she did a cervical exam on me and found that I was, <clears throat> excuse me, she did the cervical exam and found that I was two centimeters dilated and she seemed like super confused. And um, I think my cervix was, I, th I think she called it an an anterior. anterior as if it was preparing for labor. And so she told me that if I have any contractions or anything um, gets worse, then I should go to the hospital. And she also scheduled me to get some shots of, a, I think they're called beta. It's a steroid to help develop the baby's lungs because I'm just, I'm 34 weeks, six days. So <clears throat> it's really early. But anyway, so that happened yesterday. Then we come home and at night I started noticing that the feeling that I'm having is probably contractions. It's like this tightening on my stomach and I had thought it was just the baby moving but because it's not painful at all I guess I expected them to be uncomfortable even Braxton Hicks but um, I started timing them and I've been having them since I started timing them at 4 30 and I've been having them consistently throughout the whole day at least like six six to eight an hour um, sometimes if more than that and I so that's been happening and then um, I was scheduled to get my second beta shot this afternoon and right before I went into the doctor I lost part of my mucus plug so I went into the doctor and I told them what was going on and they gave me my shot and told me to go to the hospital so that is where Andrew and I are headed right now and kind of rushed and packed things not every, I mean I'm only 30 35 ish weeks so we didn't have everything prepared so. yeah, we were not ready we're not ready we were expecting <laughs> another month but yeah I mean this could be completely nothing we're just going in to see they're gonna probably just monitor me and tell me what they think so yeah this could be the start of I mean this will be the start of the vlog I just don't know how long this is gonna go on for so Crazy stuff. Driving through a storm. Yeah, it's all like stormy and like icy rain. So yeah. it's a lovely, a lovely it be, afternoon. It would be a snowstorm if it was a little cooler, but instead yeah. it's kind of like rain. Yeah, it's, well, it's 31 degrees, so it could freeze. <laughs> but yeah, we will update you when we find out more information. I didn't have a jacket. That's so good. Hmm? Like people coming, so. Do you so have awkward. anything to say to the camera? No, we just don't know where we're going. This is crazy. Well, we made it to the labor and delivery area of the hospital and we are just waiting in the waiting room till a room becomes available. And they then said it could take 12 hours. It did not. <laughs> and once a room is available, they're gonna just monitor me and then see if I can be admitted, but I'm so tired. <laughs> so yeah. we don't know how long it will be, but hopefully it won't be too long. <sighs> I keep losing more of my mucus plug every time I go to the bathroom. So. You did? Yeah. You sure? Yes. Yeah, so right. something is happening. I just don't know how long it takes once your mucus plug comes out. Because I read online that it could be really soon or it could be like weeks. So I don't know if it really means anything, but we'll see. We made it into the triage room and <laughs> I'm hooked up to the machines and I got super anxious. <laughs> My heart rate is so high. 
You can talk louder. Oh, They're not going to be able to hear oh, you. Oh, my heart rate is 134 right now, so I'm trying to just not be stressed out because I don't want that to contribute to anything. But, yeah, we're just being monitored right now. and We're waiting for the doctor. Yeah, waiting for the doctor to come in, so... All hooked up. I got this, and I got my stomach bands. Exciting things. I don't remember what the last thing we told we told you guys is, but they had me on the monitor, and they noticed that I had some really big contractions that were like really really long, and during that time the baby's heart rate dipped quite a bit. So they said that we have to stay overnight. Um, we're not like fully admitted to the hospital yet or anything. We're just being staying observed. in this room, <laughs> being observed. <laughs> Poor Andrew has a plastic chair. <laughs> yeah, so it's not the most comfortable, but we kind of think what happened was I moved and the monitor kind of slid down, and so that's why the heart rate looked like it was going down, but we need to be sure. And they said that if it that keeps happening, they'll have to do a C-section. Um, but we anticipate that's not going to be the case because everything's been looking good so far. But I've been having some really long contractions and I don't really feel them. They're like really long, like five minutes, three to five minutes. And I don't know if that's normal or why that's happening. But yeah. So yeah, we'll keep you updated if anything else happens, but for right now we're just hanging out here. Andrew got some Tim Hortons, and I'm gonna try to relax for the night as best as we can. Sarah's not allowed to have any food or drinks. Oh yeah, I can't have anything to eat or drink just in case I need a C-section, so I'm hooked up to this IV. That was the worst part so far. Don't show it too close, it's a blood. That was the worst part. Well, the cervical check was pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, so now we're just going to try to relax for a while and see what happens. Good morning, Sarah. <laughs> Good morning. Do you have anything to say to the camera? We survived. We survived the night. And I think right before, so I think we were, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> last night, nothing too eventful happened. I think right after I filmed the last clip, the baby's heart rate dropped a bit and they made me <clears throat> come in and they turned me onto my left side and it seems like that helps with the heart rate issue um and then during the night I don't think I was my contractions definitely slowed down a lot but now um it seems like I'm getting them every five minutes and they're not there I'm a little bit crampy but it's not anything painful still so I'm not really sure what's gonna happen um we're waiting to hear from the fetal um, specialist doctor and I don't know I'm hoping that I can have something to drink soon I'm so thirsty that's like my biggest issue <laughs> so so thirsty um, the, I didn't really sleep much last night but I think Andrew got a little sleep how much sleep did you get yeah I got a little sleep I got a little sleep I've got the nurse on, on you know that was it was our nurse. She managed to snag me this recliner chair, so I was able to actually kind of kick back and sleep some. So I probably got a few hours of sleep. So I'm feeling not too bad. Definitely feeling like I'd like a coffee. I'm kind of waiting to make sure I don't miss the doctor. So when you walk in the door, you have a little sink over here to the side, some paper towels, and a computer that nobody has used. And then this is my area over here. I've got this little recliner chair. And then I've got that table that I've been using with my iPad and stuff. And of course, Sarah right here in the middle of the room with her bed. And then over here we have all the drugs inside of that cabinet. And then obviously the waste bins. And then over here is our monitor. So this is where we've been keeping track of um, baby's heart rate up top. And then the um, contractions down here. And uh, yeah, so that's our room. Oh, there is a TV as well in the upper corner, but Sarah has not wanted to use it. So we've just been chilling. I think I just feel like anxious and like when I get anxious, I don't, I have a hard time like concentrating on TV. I don't know why I never want to watch TV when I don't feel my best, which is like the weirdest thing. So I feel like that's very normal for people to do. Yeah, that would be I just, my like, go-to. I'm just nervous. Like I end up just like scrolling on Instagram and, and TikTok and stuff. But that's okay. I don't know. 
yeah, so we're just waiting for the doctor. Hopefully she comes soon so that I can, and she says that I can have water or juice. Mm -hmm. The most wonderful thing ever right now would be to have a glass of cold apple juice or even warm apple juice. That'd be so fun. Hi guys, been a few hours since our last update. We're still at the hospital. Um, I think our last update was like at 8.30 or something this morning. It's now 11, well it's 10.51, but it's going on 11. We're still waiting on the doctor to come. I have no idea. They told us it was going to be an hour, roughly an hour, and that was at 8 o'clock, so they should have been here like two hours ago. <laughs> I, I don't know. This is we're just waiting, so we're in our little prep room waiting for the doctors to come. Sarah's been having some contractions. Um, she got up to stretch her legs and was sitting up in her bed and stuff, and the baby's heart rate kind of started dropping. So she, what's interesting is, like, she rolls over on her left side and it goes back to normal. So evidently it's a lot easier for the baby that way, I guess. So she's been kind of just laying on her left side. She's super uncomfortable. She still can't eat or drink anything. They're not letting her eat or drink, so she feels miserable, like just super sick. I don't know why they're not letting her eat or drink. Like I get they're worried about having to do an emergency C-section or something, but I mean, I feel like if it was an emergency, they would be back here by now. I don't know, like they can see what her numbers are and stuff you know through the nurse's station and everything so i would think if it was a problem they'd probably be back by now but they're not here so sarah's just kind of suffering through it for right now i'm sitting here i'm just watching stuff on my ipad and chilling and hanging out but yeah just thought we would give you guys a bit of an update because we're still at the hospital just hanging out guys i got some food well, I got crackers, and I got apple juice, and I get to order off the menu, and they have veggie burgers. So I'm super excited. I haven't seen the doctor yet, though, so I still have to wait to see for them to come up and to see what's going on. But I'm assuming this means I do not have to do a C-section, which I figured they didn't, wouldn't need to anyways. But yeah, I'm so happy. I feel so much better already. <laughs> I'm so thirsty. I've been wanting apple juice, so yes. Hello. <laughs> well, if you noticed, we've got moved to a bigger room and it's so nice. I have a proper bed now and Andrew has a much more comfortable spot to sleep. And we have a window, which is really nice. Um, so they, I think they were going to discharge us because they were seeing that everything looked pretty good, but they wanted to do like an ultrasound first. And then we asked if she could do a cervical check on me and when we had that done, they saw that I was three centimeters dilated, which means I went up another centimeter. And so they're like, okay, you're not leaving. And we are still here and we got moved to this room, but I'm not really having a lot of contractions. I guess the few that I have had are big ones and it's still like, the baby doesn't like it. Their heart rate is dropping, but yeah, I'm not really having that many anymore. and. I don't really know if they're gonna just send us home tomorrow or what, but I'm really tired. And other than that, I feel fine. Uh, how do you feel, Andrew? I'm feeling better. I feel, you know, I kind of think I fell asleep earlier I did over too. there. <laughs> so yeah, I fell asleep feel in here. It's so much more not comfortable. Not too bad. Oh, so much more comfortable. I took a shower here. It was nice. But yeah, I just wish I was, like, I. I I wish that I was just having contractions and that this was just progressing instead of like just not knowing what's going on and just being here for days and then going home and then coming back so but it is also quite early so I don't know what I should be hoping for but <sighs> yeah do you want to show them the room? Mm -hmm. So this is our lovely new room. It's really nice actually. So this is just the door that you come in. Big old door. Now we actually have a door. Well, a proper door. You have your little equipment. That's just a big light on the wall. Um, Sarah obviously in her nice comfy bed. It's no longer a stretcher. So Sarah's over here in her bed. We have like this little sink here, which is nice for washing hands and a garbage can. Um, <clears throat> And then over here we have another garbage can, a little mini fridge. 
this uh, you know little shelf that we've occupied with all of our things. Um, then over here we have a closet that we can put clothes and stuff in. Uh, we're not really utilizing it. This is kind of my space over here. So well, you have Sarah's table for her food. Um, but this is like a chair that folds out into like basically a bed. So I've been laying there. I think I actually laid down and fell asleep for a little while earlier, which was really nice. I'm not really sure what this chair is for, but there's also this chair. And then over here in the corner, this is really great. We have our bedroom, or I'm sorry, our bathroom. So it's just the bathroom, but what's really nice is that this bathroom has a shower. So we are able to shower at our own pleasure. So yeah, this is our little hotel room and what hotel room, oh my gosh. This is our little hospital room that we're staying at at least tonight. And I'm hoping that they're gonna discharge us tomorrow. I think everything's good with the baby, so. Um, but at least they moved us into this much more comfortable room so where we can actually both be comfortable and maybe get a little rest tonight. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed our little room tour. And uh, we'll talk to you when we have more updates. Hey guys, it is 11.30ish at night. And we just, I went up to use the restroom and I think what happened was I got a pretty bad contraction. And everyone came rushing in here because the baby's heart rate dropped to 60. And yeah, they, it took them a while to like find it. They had to move me around a bunch. Um, and everything looks fine now, but that was really intense. And they said if that happens again, they'll have to do another cervical check on me. Um, but I'm assuming it means I'm gonna need a C-section tomorrow. I, I don't really know what else they would do because like I it seems like I can't get up or move or anything without that happening so yeah it was pretty stressful <laughs> yeah we have to wait and talk to the doctor tomorrow and see yeah what... see what happens when I'm laying on my side it's everything seems to be fine I don't feel like I'm even having contractions or anything so I don't know I stood up I was really crampy when I stood up and I was getting like a little bit of back spasms but it's it wasn't like anything crazy. Like they came running in here, like I had a huge contraction and it just was, it lasted a really long time. So it wasn't normal. And that seems to be what's causing the, the stress on the baby. So yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it, she stays stable all night. I just don't want to move from this spot. I'm just going to stay here and not move <laughs> my position as best as I can. So. Yeah, crazy things. Hello, I switched over to my phone because my camera's dead. So hopefully you guys can hear me, but there's been a lot of things happening since last time I updated you. Uh, I spoke to the doctor this morning and they decided to bring me down to labor and delivery. And they're gonna start me on Pitocin to see um, if they can get some regular contractions and see how the baby handles those. And if not, they're just gonna do a C-section because um, they want the baby to be born today or tomorrow so yeah it's crazy um i'm hoping that the pitocin works but we're not confident that the baby's going to be able to handle the contractions so yeah we got a new room and it's comfortable and andrew's a little bit nervous. freaking out i i thought we had more time but we do not yeah we don't it's so totally happening today definitely nervous yeah, yeah it's crazy but on a positive note, we found out that, oh, she probably didn't hear. I didn't hear her, The baby yeah. does not need to necessarily go to the NICU unless there's something wrong with her. Okay. Yeah, at this state. They still hold her, though? No. Oh, so they won't hold her until 37 weeks? No, no. Oh, okay. No, she can stay with me um, <clears throat> as long as she's warm and, like, as long as everything's okay. Like, as long as she's breathing well and she's warm and her blood sugar levels are fine. Okay. So. And we don't have to stay here with her for two weeks or whatever? No, it's just 36 we weeks. It's 36 oh, so weeks. it's one week. So yeah. she'll be here for one week. Okay, yeah. which is okay. That's okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, this is a terrible angle. Uh, yeah. Wish us luck, guys. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, this is so crazy. I'm nervous for the Pitocin because I know those that will make your contractions painful. I haven't had any really pain yet, so I'm probably in for a rude awakening, but we'll see what happens. I'm 
now oxytocin level eight. Dun, dun, dun. I feel completely fine, just a little bit of pressure. And I'm just, I'm happy because I could stand up and sway and have my little ball that I was bouncing on earlier. And yeah, I feel fine. The penicillin's done for now, so that's a relief. And baby's heart rate is looking great still. The contractions are regular. So yeah, everything's looking great. I feel a little tired and a little hungry, but that's what I expected. Andrew's very, Andrew's doing better, I think, now. Yeah. I'm feeling better. Still stressed, but I th it's going to be okay. We just bought the Outlet Dream Sock out of fear. Because <laughs> we didn't know, like, we originally wanted to get that, and then we decided not to because it's not, like, something super necessary. And a lot of people say it can go off. It's to monitor, like, the baby's oxygen and heart rate and stuff. And, um, but now we just decided since we've been born so early, it'd be a peace of mind. So we just bought that. <laughs> Traction now. I feel it. It's just like a tightening feeling, but and pressure. Like it feels almost like I have to pee really bad. I am around five-ish centimeters dilated and they hooked up a monitor to the baby's head internally so now it can better monitor um, her heart rate and make sure that everything's okay so that's really really nice and, and your contractions too oh yeah it now monitors can... my contractions as well and it'll to see tell how strong them how... they are yeah mm -hmm. so yeah we're just chilling here I feel really good I do have a little bit of um, I feel them a little bit on my left side, so I think, um, but it's, I mean, it's nothing bad, but I think the epidural is going more to my right, and I'm sure when I turn, if they turn me, that would help with that, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty fine right now. A lot of contractions happening. <laughs> Baby's heart rate's doing good. So yeah, fun times. Hey guys, I don't know when the last time you saw me, but I've gotten shaved, so I, I look like a baby face. <laughs> Anyways, we wanted to update you, so um, the nurse has been in and out periodically trying to make sure the baby stays happy, so the heart rate, um, the heart rate keeps dropping with contractions. So what they decided to do was to stop the Pitocin so that the contractions would be natural and see how the baby reacted still wasn't really enjoying them and so they've been you know kind of flip-flopping Sarah around trying different positions with her legs just trying to get her cozy um the last time the nurse came in she did that and she noticed some um <clears throat> what? yeah so she that, the last time the nurse did that she noticed some blood and she said oh that's kind of a sign that you've progressed to a further stage so she, you know, called the doctor to do a check. Um, the nurse did the check first because she was having difficulties getting a hold of a resident surgeon or a resident physician or one of the doctors. Um, and she measured it at roughly an eight. And then she had the um, resident physician come in and she measured it and she said it was probably about a seven to eight. So we're looking at... I guess we're kind of in active labor now. So we're gonna keep monitoring the contractions. Pitocin is still off, they're just gonna keep that off for now. Um, but they're monitoring the, the contractions, making sure the heart rate stays normal and, or you know dips, but not too much. And yeah, so we're in active labor. What do you think, Sarah? I'm excited, it's crazy. I feel a lot better now. I, I think um, the epidural top up kicked in. I'm not. I don't feel any contractions. I'm assuming I'm having them. So. Yeah, you had one or two while I was oh, filming. Okay, yeah, I'm fine. I feel great then. I got really shaky though. I started like shivering. That's why she. Another reason she thought I had transitioned, and yeah, I did. So. This has gone a lot faster than we thought it'd go. Yeah. What so we're getting it? closer. It's, it's four thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Four forty-five. 
All right, we will bring you back when we have more updates. Breath in, chin to chest. Do you feel my fingers? Oh, that's very good. Okay. Six, go, go, five. guys I guess it's time for an update so it's been a little while <laughs> it's been a few days <laughs> since we filmed because things just got kind of crazy but yeah I think the, <laughs> the last thing that you would have seen is me um, getting ready to have baby and we had her <laughs> she's really really cute and the labor went very well much better than I thought it was gonna go and it was pretty quick I pushed for like 40 minutes or something. Yeah, and I, I thought it went really fast. Yeah, it didn't even feel like that. Like, honestly, I thought, I mean, if you would have asked me, I would have said I pushed for like 10, 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, you were but, the one pushing. Yeah, but it's it didn't feel like 40 minutes. It went really fast and painless, and mm -hmm. it was really great. I couldn't have asked for it to go any better, really. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so now we have our little Pee Wee, and she's been doing good, but there have been some, like, ups and downs going on which is why we're still here um well, what I happened mean, i feel like we'd still be here anyways yeah they wouldn't have discharged you're right. us yesterday it's only been it hasn't even been 48 hours yeah since you're right she um what did, what even happened well she was remember. born at like 7 18 at night yeah. so she came here we came to this room everything was looking good all her vitals and all her little tests and stuff everything was doing great um what you have to do with babies or at least what we have to do i'm not sure if they do this with all of them probably but especially since she's so early she has to um do the sugar tests so she has to be fed and then she has to do a sugar test every three hours and she has to pass she has to get a certain number and um <clears throat> You do it for every three hours for 24 hours. If you fail one of them, they give her sugar in the form of like a gel and you start over. So that's kind of why we're going to be here until later today because she failed one early afternoon yesterday. So we, we were breastfeeding and we started supplementing with formula to try to help mm -hmm. with that. So it's a, it's a lot easier for, yeah. for them, you know, to maintain sugar and stuff. It's a high sugar formula, <clears throat> and it's been helping a lot, so. Yeah, and then she also, um, so what was it called? I don't really know, I don't, I'm going to get it wrong, but her bilirubin levels were off, they so. They were high. They were high, okay. They were too high. So, um, they had to have her under, like, a phototherapy light. Billy Rubin is what Billy is, is associated to jaundice. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's too high. So she's been under a light, and they just, like, for a while, like, the, for a, a lot of the night. And I felt so bad for her because you have to, she could only be in her diaper. She couldn't have any, like, swaddle or blanket on her, and she does not like being she doesn't naked. Like being naked. <laughs> so, and it's just not, like, it wasn't super warm or anything. So, poor little thing. But what we found out was she was on her back for a long time. But she was so much cozier on her stomach. You just have yeah. to watch her while she's on yeah, her stomach. Yeah, so the nurse flipped her to her stomach and had her head to the side as long as we were available to watch her. Um, because it can be dangerous if you're not, obviously, if you're not watching her. But she much preferred that, and she did great. And they just tested her again this morning, and her levels are back where they need to be. So now we just got to wait. She's not going to be under the light for the rest of the day. And then this afternoon at like 3.30, they're going to test again and make sure that her level her levels are still okay. And if they are, I think we get to go home. Yes, yeah, which... so we have one sugar test left. She has to yeah. pass in a couple hours. And then the Billy Rubin at 3.30. It's, yeah. it's like 10 o'clock right now. Yeah, 10 yeah. o'clock. So. Oh, she has to also pass a car seat test. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they test them. They put them in a car seat, get them all snug and stuff, and they measure, like, their oxygen mm -hmm. and their heart rates to make sure that they'll be able to handle um, a simulated car ride home. Yeah. 
So they do it for 90 minutes. She yeah. has to sit in there. So those three things. She passes those three things and we get to go home tonight. Yep. Which I really hope because I think it will be nicer to be home I think we'll a be few able reasons. To rest a little better. Yeah. Because there's not people constantly. Like when we're here, it's nice because we have a lot of people here like to answer questions. But oh, we're not getting any sleep at all. And it's not baby's fault. It's there's just people in here all the time coming in to do tests, ask questions, do th this and that. Like her feeding schedule will give us enough sleep to function. But the with the testing, it's just a, it's a lot of being awake. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, so we're a bit... Andrew's really not feeling good. But. Yeah, I think I'm just super exhausted. I feel like... If you've ever gone on a trip and you're like super jet lagged and you were traveling for a long time and you didn't eat well and you yeah. just feel like your body's like crapped out. Yeah, the food isn't the healthiest that we've been eating here. No, they it's don't been, have great yeah, food. It's yeah. really weird. Like, I never really understood that about like hospitals. I mean, I'm not, I don't think it's like super crazy bad on healthy, but it's like. No worries to eating. No, I mean, they're not proper meals, yeah. I feel like. At least not in the same sense, so. Yeah. But. Nonetheless, she's here, and she's, she's doing, good. doing well, and... She's doing very good for being born so early. Yeah. And, yeah, I had a really easy delivery, and I'm totally fine. I feel great, really. Yeah, we so. were able to deliver vaginally. Yeah, we thought we were going to have the C-section. We did not, which mm -hmm. is... Like, I don't know, they put me on the Pitocin. It made my contractions, like, act as they should, and I wasn't in pain at all. I'm assuming it's because I got the epidural before they broke my water. And the epidural did not impact my contractions at all. And I, I don't know, I, I dilated really fast and pushed the baby really fast. And I guess I was just really lucky. So I'm really happy yeah. and I feel pretty good now. So We've had a great staff of nurses. Yeah, yeah everyone at this really hospital great. is amazing. So Yeah, it's been a really great experience. Except for the just first night. The first night was tough. But we just look like we're super tired. Well, we were disheveled. in the prep room. It was weird. Yeah. So, but it's, it's been really yeah. good. And I look better. I'm really excited to take her home to meet the cats. <laughs> and yeah. everyone else that she needs yeah, to meet. I'm kind of a, a Schedule. routine with her. Yeah. And, you know, try to get back to our new state of normalcy. So. Yeah. It's exciting. We'll catch up with you guys later to let you know how her test went. She's yeah. doing good. She's so sweet. Sister Sprinkles.